welcome to the new daily Ramon Foster Show brought to you by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market where they're always open for business serving hot fresh food. Moan, daily, like daily. every day, like Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. I know, man. We were, uh, we've were we talked about it for a while. You brought it up last year. You came up to me in the locker room to be like, you should do it. Years I'm like, ago. Hey. I was just like, whatever, man. And it's perfect timing <laughs> now. I know. Until you, hey, we, the, the mad genius is what got it here. Yeah, that's kind of how that works, too. That would be the uh, boss, my wife, Dolly. That when, Once we get to that point where it starts looking like a serious endeavor, then we're all the way in. And we are yeah. all the way in. Uh, if are. you enjoy watching Ramon's show uh, here on, the, uh, on DK Pittsburgh Sports, feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. We're here for you. Mm-hmm. We're here to talk Steelers. And, and Moan, let's dive right in. Uh, I'm going to throw something at you here, put you on the spot. Let's go with you are Kevin Colbert, mm-hmm. which means all of a sudden we all just got a lot smarter, right? I know. I know. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> Devin Bush versus Joe Hayden. Devin Bush versus Joe Hayden. Under the circumstances, if you had to pick one, how would you go about doing it? What factors would you look at? Man. I'm See, picking you youth. never said it was going to be easy. I know you didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking youth, though. I, I do. I think that linebacker position across the board, whether outside linebackers or inside linebackers, are are just – they've always been crucial for Pittsburgh. And I think Devin fits that, too. And I know his situation is a little murky considering the season he just had. But, again, I'll never make excuses for anybody. But I will say this, coming off of the ACL, you don't move up to go get him without actually – believing in his talent too and lo and behold kev might have a little bit of just bias to him because i mean the other players kev has actually moved up to get so he mm-hmm. feels a little invested in devin and you got to make sure that this works out for you but on the other side too, if i can make a case for joe i'm picking devin but i'm gonna make a case for joe too mm-hmm. joe has proven folks wrong from day one since coming into this league now you say yeah well joe is the number six or seven overall pick joe hasn't had to prove anybody wrong wrong Joe went through Cleveland. Let's just throw that out there, okay? Oh, yeah. Years. For years of that, and not just, you know, making fun of the Cleveland Browns organization, but it's the idea that Joe was a bright spot, along with Joe Thomas, for a very long time. He held his own as far as Pro Bowls goes. He played at a high level for an entire for his entire career there for the most part. And from that situation, that's the reason we were excited to get him in Pittsburgh. And he's proven his worth over and over again. I actually read an article this morning. It was talking about the top 15 uh, combine bus. Joe Hayden was on that list because (laughs) of his time. Joe ran a 4.54 or 4.51 or something like that. He didn't jump high from what they said. He didn't do all the things necessary for him to be the quote-unquote top guy. But he was still drafted number six overall. And if you look at his career, you'll say, He's pretty much proven that wrong. Joe's a fighter. He's a gritty guy. Uh, I'll never forget him coming into Pittsburgh. Coach T telling him, you need to stick your face in the fan, meaning we need you to be more physical on the run plays. And I think we all can agree. Joe's done that. So much so, what was the game this year where he pulled, snatched the guy back on fourth down? Oh, uh, was that Tennessee? Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh. Joe's repertoire no. before he got to Pittsburgh, so he's molded himself. Dude needed another back. inch. The dude needed about another back. inch. Think and Joe, it, that was a solo tackle. It was it was a solo tackle of the year in the of NFL, the arguably. And then the other part of of Joe's situation, this is a bad year for corners and free agency. The what draft is the draft oh. is loaded yeah. with prospects from from round one, I'd say, all the way up to round four. You can get a guy. Not Pittsburgh's going to have to find a way to find that guy in this draft. Did he do decide to let go of Joe this um, this free agency, man? Well, it's speaking- a hard feel. It's part of the process. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of Pittsburgh having a hard time finding that guy, Pittsburgh's been trying to find Ryan Shazier's replacement for a lot of years, and that was a big motivator for moving up and getting Bush. And when you talk about positions that are shortcomings mm-hmm. on this football team, You're talking about inside linebacker in general because you don't have – they're not bringing Joe Schobert back at $8 million. I don't know that they'd be bringing Schobert back under any circumstance, right? So it's it's like you already have him in-house. It's just to me, I can't get – 
I, it feels to me like they need to negotiate something. You know what I mean? You can decline it. The you option, de- that's the other one. And they keep them, that. you know? Like, that's where we are with, I mean, they declined Terrell's. Yep. And picked up Minka's. So it's this is a good problem when you have a good team for a long time and you got to make these type of decisions too. Uh, certainly on that side of the football, they've 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 had uh, they they've been blessed in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. So you're keeping Bush and uh, and and still loving Joe. Maybe Joe can come back on some kind of bargain deal. You know it's, what I mean? Cavs always trying to do it. That's what he does. He's a magician, man. <laughs> When we come back here on the Ramon Foster Show, how would you tailor an offense for Mason Rudolph? Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Ramon, Mason Rudolph was on uh, national radio over the weekend, and he mm-hmm. talked about the difference uh, of, of the Matt Canada offense. Now, you've been pretty critical of the Matt Canada offense, wondering basically what it is, what, what's mm-hmm. the identity to it. Tell me, what is a Mason Rudolph offense, and why does he think, as he expressed on this show, that he'll be a good fit for the Canada offense. A Mason Rudolph offense, I think it's comprised of moving the pocket, drop back deep balls, and a good running game. That sounds hmm. as stereotypical as almost any quarterback's yeah. uh, offense. But Mason, I think he'll be good on the run. He's not 4-5, four, 4-4, four, 4-3 four, 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 speed, but he's good enough to where you can manipulate the pocket and he's got a strong enough arm to where he can make fields, make make plays down the field with his arm. That's why I think you're going to maximize Mason. Sitting him in the pocket, man, I don't think it's going to be as big for him simply because look at where he came from in college. He'll drop back and the ball is gone. I think yeah. the best bet for him is to play action, give him space, give him protection to move the ball down the field or move the pocket. And truth be told, the other side of this is you got to look at the pieces around us that's, that's going to be with Mason, too. We got to figure out again where this offensive line is going to match up. How are they going to piece it together? The other part is you know you have a really good running back. That can also protect you in the passing game, too. I mean, Najee is good as a blocker. You got to give him that, man. Yes, and then it's the is. weapons that's already there in Pittsburgh, too. For me, I say it comes play action. It comes run game, and then it comes deep balls for Mason. That's how you cater an offense for him. I don't know if the motion is going to do a whole lot for him, but the thing that I've always admired about him, we spoke about this recently, he is a field general when it comes down to it. He's just got to be given the keys to the car. Now, how long it lasts or what it's going to look like at the end product on how he makes his decisions on the field, that's totally up to him. But I'm not going to sit here and say that Mason can't move the pocket. Mason can't throw the ball on the move. Mason doesn't have a nice deep ball. We saw him do that with James Washington time and time again. You got to maximize what they did in college. You like the college tape, right? That's the reason Kev, Coach T, Randy Finkner at the time got Mason Rudolph. That's the reason why you look at Mason Rudolph and said, well, he's always been the type that felt like he can play. He never pressed Ben as far as his playing ability, but you looked at Mason was like, this guy's a true pro. He knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. And you got to think if his mind, his mental game can catch up to whatever Matt Canada puts out there for him, mm-hmm. he could be a very serviceable quarterback. Now, what's serviceable one since we're asking that question? We're talking about Jimmy G. Andy we're Dalton. talking about – I think he's better than Andy <laughs> Dalton already, okay? I'm just going to throw that <laughs> out there. That, I just had just, to serve up the Bengals. You did. Right you know how to get me going, man. Um, <laughs> could he, he – he could possibly be – golly, as AFC North is a tough division to, to try to rank a quarterback in. Yeah, I think it's Joe. I think it's Lamar. <laughs> it's Joe Lamar. Um, Joe Lamar, Baker, and, and Mason, if those are going to be your guys. I put Mason three in that list, which ain't a bad list because those two young guys are top tens yeah, and they're I, I guess respective the, the, young guy group. The thing that jumped out at me about Mason this past year, and I understand he only played the one game, so people didn't see him 
all that much. I, I, I'm watching him in practice and, and, and seeing him a lot more. The yeah. thing that jumped out at me, Moan, is that his feet settled down. Remember all the Mason happy mm-hmm. feet? I yeah, you blocking, I know. You were blocking for the happy feet. Like stay and in the pocket. <laughs> just, just, just relax, man. We got you, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and this year, of all years, with the unsettled offensive line, and it was a focus for him, and yeah. he talked about it. He just wanted to make sure that he stood in there and sent that signal. How important mm-hmm. is that to everybody else on that offense to see that? It's big time, man, because if you're nervous and I'm nervous because you don't trust me. <laughs> and that's the that's the beauty of what an offensive line is. That's where Ben is at what he did as a as a player, too. Like he would stay in the pocket and take those hits to the face while throwing the ball. Mason, I think, kind of he didn't see that in college. You know, or having uh who was it that that hit him from Baltimore? Earl Thomas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he's had some trauma in it. Can he get back to that mode? Mason is a very confident quarterback you know and that goes a long way when we're talking about who can command the team heck they're giving mitch trubisky all kind of flowers now for going to basically practice squad (laughs) in buffalo yeah right like let's be serious here yeah i think mason has it in him to be better like i i put him in a jimmy g dak conversation with given the amount of time and truth be told that's pretty doggone good when we come back the very first entry of Hey Moan. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's time for the Hey Moan segment yeah, yeah it feels like it feels like we need someone to shout that like from the from the top of mount washington or something i've i've no no i've heard coach tomlin kevin colbert uh all those guys <laughs> say that time and say, hey mo i've heard hey, that mo. numerous times okay yeah that's a real thing i like it it's got it's got a good yeah. feel to it well our very that's first cool. hey moan comes from nathan tewksbury who left this on youtube he says hey moan i don't get it why does everyone want to fix the offensive line in the draft Go out in free agency and get two starters. At least get a right guard like Alex Kappa or Austin Corbett. They're not going to draft offensive line in the first and second rounds, are they? Very good question. Um, yeah. Drafting in the first oh, and second round. This wasn't going to be easy. Uh, no, it's not. But, hey, <laughs> this is what we do. Um, with, with, with those two guys, you get an opportunity to have a veteran that's already played. Both of these guys already got 50 starts. I mean, 50 uh, games under their belts with over 40 starts, too. That's the beauty of what those two guys bring to the table. You got one that's played for a world champion and the other one who's the current world champion also. The thing is, is where you got to look into when you're asking for veterans is the price point. I I know this is a beautiful place for Pittsburgh Steelers, too. They got the most cap, I feel like, cap space I've seen them have in years. Yeah. So they have the ability to go do that. Just looking at the breakdown of, of Kappa's. He got an esc. I think it may have been an escalator or a new deal for Tampa Bay that puts his bottom line right now at two point one eight million dollars. On the other side, Austin Corbett is one point five million, but he's also coming back from being the world champions in L.A. Yeah. And you got another guy who's uh, Kappa, who's pretty much. I mean, it seems like Tampa Bay is about to just just member break everything up for the most part. You would think so, yeah. The one guy that I think would make the more sense is because the offenses are very similar would be Tampa Bay. It would be Alex Kappas, simply because Bruce Arians type offense. This team has kind of been used to it, unless we're going to see something different from what uh, Matt Canada is going to do with this team. Because I'm looking at the scheme of, of the Rams, very side to side play action, heavy team. We could be looking at Corbett in that sense. So, to say that you just don't draft a guard or draft a, you know, a, a, a center out of the draft, and I know we're talking about centers too at this point too. We um, probably should be. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I look at the scheme and what's going to fit. Again, we're waiting to see what this Mason Rudolph catered Matt Canada offense is going to look like. Those two guys that were brought up, Kappa and and Corbett, both have experience. The thing is, it's the price point. And when you're going to pay that price for a veteran guard, especially guard, because we get crapped on a little bit, is uh, they need to be surefire guys. And I, I say that in the sense of 
who's gonna make sure that whoever you're choosing from is the guy because we're looking at Trey Turner from last year. Yes. And you say to yourself, how did that really pan out? What did it he didn't. get? Five? Yeah, he got so? five, he got five and, and, and it, it it didn't it work. It did pan out. So the floor for these two guys, if one is making 2.1, the other one is making 1.5. You're going to have to average with the cap going up probably five or six or more a year for a guy like that, if not more, considering I, I both get, of these guys have played a lot. I guess the thing that jumps out at me in this conversation uh, was something that Kevin Colbert said at the Combine last week, and that's that he felt that the draft, mm -hmm. the draft uh, is a lot stronger at tackle than it is on the interior line. Okay, now that – Kev will, will occasionally – telegraph something like that yeah okay? he will. so they'll be looking at i, I think they're going to be looking at interior linemen and we're again we're talking about guard and to a lesser right. extent center depending on how it is that they end up feeling about kendrick yeah. green because they like kevin dotson at left guard he's obviously going to okay. need some work but that right guard position might be the one that you go out and do uh free agency with and then say listen we believe in the tackles in this draft class yeah yeah, uh, we can go ahead and augment whatever, you know, Dan Moore uh, mm -hmm. uh, that we have there. And then they obviously have to make a decision, something you and I have been talking a lot about on Chooks Sakura for it, right? Tackle. Um, yeah, they got work to do. They yeah, got they, work to do here. And Kev's trying to make a last push on his last draft and free agency. Kev, you got your hands full because truth be told, people are gonna they're gonna point back at you whenever they name the new GM and say, Well, that's Kev's guy. You yeah, right. So, For years. That's, that's Kev's guy. Don't trust me, those things stick. That's right. This was the first daily Ramon Foster show. We're gonna be here for anybody who hasn't heard Monday through Friday, every afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. Uh we want your feedback, yeah. you know. Come back, especially for the Hey Mom, too. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there with you in, in, in comments, wherever it is that you happen to see or hear this. Uh, but this, this is going to be fun. You know, a lot of fun. Look at him smile. See how, how can you I, I'm enjoying this. I really am. How can, how can you say no to that smile? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to everybody tomorrow. No doubt. No.